Okay, we are back. It's been almost two weeks since I've filmed anything. Um, life has been crazy. It was my last two weeks of summer break. So I went up to my husband's family's lake for a very long weekend. And then I went camping with my family for a long weekend. And then I started my new job yesterday. Um, so it's been a very long few weeks. My cat is eating my plant. You just never know what you're going to get with these videos. Um, but before I went up to the lake, I started Unravel Me, which came out on August 1st. This was like, Peter, my biggest like anticipated read of the year, my most anticipated read of the year. Um, and so I was like, oh, I'm going to document my reaction to I've seen people like document as they read things they thought I was like I'm going to do this well I started the book on the first and then the second we went up to the lake well I'm not the type of person to like film in front of my family or what Peter <laughs> or friends or whatever Jesus Christ I'm not I just don't do it so my dog is scratching at the door So I did a read, I had 48%. So I'm going to include videos of thoughts from that I recorded as I was reading. But basically I figured I'd just come and I'd sit and discuss, you know, things I loved. There was very much, very little that I hated about this book or didn't like. Hate is a strong word, I love Becca Mac. Um, so I'm gonna insert the clips of what I read up to, so I read the last clip was 48%, which was kind of like leading up to the climax of plot, um, whatever. So. Okay, bear with me. This is my first time doing this and I don't know if I'll be consistent, um, but I'm gonna try to document my reaction to this book, Unravel Me by Becca Mack. Um, I am on like page two or three and I'm already giggling. Her books are so funny. Um, the puck sluts who are the hockey players are texting and um, Garrett is dating Carter's sister. Um, so Garrett says, 30 minutes, Jenny's about to take me for a ride and Jenny is Carter's sister. And Carter says, fuck you. Garrett said, rather fuck your sister. And then another hockey player named Emmett said, Dad, this is where you interject. And uh, Adam, who is, who's Unraveled Me is about, said, I'm Dad, and my unofficial job is to keep Carter and Garrett safe from each other. <laughs> like, just imagining, like, five, like, mid-twenties to thirties grown six-foot-five hockey players arguing like this just makes me chuckle, so. I'm so excited. I'm just gonna be here reading all day. Rosie's on a hike with one of the rescue dogs, Piglet, which I think is such a cute name, and she hears someone yell, bear, and so she thinks a bear is coming, so she is, like, freaking out, and instead, Adam's dog, Bear, just comes and tackles her, and he's so sweet and nice. And Lake is licking her all over. And then Adam comes up and they're like flirty vibes. Um, but my heart is like, he, like when, uh, I can't even explain it. Piglet like trusted Bear and Adam and it was like going to them even though she was like anxiety and doesn't trust men. She like let Adam pet her and she was like nose to nose with Bear. Oh, I love that. I don't know how Becca does it, but like she literally just makes me laugh out loud and I don't really laugh out loud when I'm reading books, but her books always. Adam went on this awful date, and the girl took a selfie while they were kissing. It said that he was a three out of five on the kiss scale. And his mom FaceTimed him to make fun of him. Like, I just am laughing so hard. And she said... <laughs> She 
she said, maybe we need to come visit sooner rather than later because you only got a three out of five on the kiss scale and your tongue tongue work needs some work or something like that. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Adam just went over to Rosie's house to talk to her and he met Connor, her son. And she said, um, in case that was something you wanted in your life. And Adam said, why would that matter? And Rosie said, it matters to a lot of people. And Adam says, it doesn't matter to me. Now I get two for the price of one. Stop. That is like the sweetest line. Okay, I'm 28% in. And I don't ever read like books really this fast, but I can't put it down. Um, but back to the group chat. I think this is like my favorite thing in the book right now. And Carter asked Adam if the car seat worked. And Garrett said, what car seat? And Carter said, I'm talking to Adam, not you. And Garrett said, fine, I'll go back to what I was doing before. Your sister. And then Carter says, you motherfucker. And Emmett, who's a friend of the group, says, believe the correct term is sister fucker, bud. <laughs> and then Carter said, I fucking hate you all. I'm only talking to Adam from now on. <laughs> and then, okay, I just, I haven't even got to this part, but I'm reading it right now. It says, and Carter says, did the car seat work for your girlfriend? And Garrett said, how old is Rosie? <laughs> and then Emmett his girlfriend or wife I can't remember which says stepdaddy Adam man just went from a 10 out of 10 to a solid 20 love that so I read a bit last night um you know everything was going so good and now into the part where Rosie's baby daddy is being the absolute worst human I've ever read, um, ever met. And now she's losing her scholarship to veterinary school. And I'm just like, when is this girl going to catch a break? Um, and as someone who also suffers from anxiety, I just really relate to all the feelings she's feeling. And I feel like Becca did a great job, um, like writing them and giving them, you know, I don't know how to word it, like representing what it feels like. I'm 48% in. Rosie finally told Adam everything about her childhood and it's really sad that her parents like died in a fire and they saved her. And she was never adopted. Like that's so sad. She has so much trauma. And I am just sitting there like, Adam, tell her you're in the NFL. And NFL, sorry. Tell her you're in the NHL. It's a literally not a big deal if you just explain what's going on and why you didn't want to tell her. She just told you every traumatic thing that's happened to her. Tell her you're a hockey player. I'm reading. I was like, oh, look, this is what I'm in cost stealing right now by C.E. Ricky. Um, but I want to go back to Unravel Me and read just a few of my favorite quotes. Talk about things that I loved. First of all, the cover is my favorite. Okay, let's go. Like how Becca can write such a, my dog is coming, stay, such a like, funny lighthearted story and then also just throw in this like plot of loss and grief and healing I just don't understand because it's so well done every time um which I kind of started to talk about in my last clip like Rosie had such a traumatic part of her childhood and it was really interesting to see on the flip side how Adam's childhood was even though they had part of the same story or similar story um I will say I was frustrated with how Adam took so long to tell her he was in the NHL, which I kind of got into my, while I was reading it too, like, it was a very big miscommunication trope, which I, is not my favorite, like, I'm just like, just tell them what happened, just tell them, especially something like that, because 
as a reader, I'm like, that's like minuscule, which I understand, you know, Adam has just felt like people had just used him because he was in hockey or used him for his name or whatever. And I get that. But I feel like pretty early on, you could tell that was not Rosie's intention, especially when she brought in her son, Connor. So I was like, just tell her, just tell her you're in the NHL and I bet she'll understand. Um, so, but there were a lot of themes I really enjoyed. Like I said, this is like the best found family that I think I've read. Um, I especially love just getting glimpses of Carter and Olivia. They're so funny. Again, I don't really laugh out loud at books, but this book has me laughing out loud and almost crying at certain points. Like my sister-in-law was up at the lake with me and I was further ahead than her. She was like kind of just starting to read it. And I was like, this book has me laughing, crying in my feels, like all of it. And I really like, I rated it like infinity stars. I only rate on up to five stars. And I just was like, if you're going to read a sports romance, if you don't like sports romance, this is the book to read because it's so much more than that. And I feel like that's what people like a misconception is. It's like, it's not just sports. Like this has so many other tropes that I honestly think are better suited for it than sports, but I understand where it comes from. Um, found family being one of them. So one of my highlights is, oh my, this is one of my favorite things that I didn't get to talk about. So Carter, who is book one, does an underwear shoot and his ad happens to be on a park bench where she waits for the bus. So one day, Adam picks her up and by this park bench and she's like, I just, I can't stop staring at this underwear model's junk. And of course, Adam knows Carter, but he can't say he knows Carter. And so he's just like, oh yeah. And then later when they get to, you know, doing it, she says, I think you're bigger than that underwear model on the bus stop shelter. And he says, I definitely am. Because of course he knows they do like locker room stuff. And then like later in the story, they like actually compare and he is bigger. But it just is so like, that just had me laughing. There are some parts where I was like, Adam's a little cringy, but like I could get behind his humor. My, one of my favorite, like, I'm a big fate girly. Like, I believe in fate 110%. Um, you know, like, I very much believe, like, my husband and I met through fate, like, all these things. So he says, fate has taken so much to only grant me so many invaluable things in this life. And as much as I've tried not to question it, to simply take what it gives me, I'd be lying if I said I didn't sometimes question the process of getting here. I just feel like that's a great way to sum up fate. Like you don't have a choice on what's going to happen and there's so many things that maybe you wish you could have changed, but if it hadn't happened, you wouldn't be where you are. And I think about that a lot. Um, one of the quotes Rosie says, um, you know, she's struggling with her relationship with Adam. I can't remember if this is before or after she found out. But she says, you know, it's hard to see her worth when, you know, nobody's sitting down at the table with her. So she said, it's hard to see what you bring to the table when no one sits down at it with you. And one of her friends says, here's the thing, Rosie, you don't need anyone to sit at the table with you. You need to be happy sitting there with yourself. That's the only way you'll ever understand and treasure your own worth. Which I just think is a great sentiment to be like, it's a great sentiment to be like, if you don't love yourself you know, first, then someone can't talk to you, which is like hit or miss, but, but like she has to be able to see what she brings to the table before someone can come along and appreciate it. With this, I always like to highlight, um, Duddy. No. I always like to highlight where like the title comes from. It's in here a few times. This is one, this one, this one, I think the only one I highlighted. So Adam says, she unravels every string. And when she puts me back together again, I'm better than I was before. Whole, finally. And I don't think I've ever been whole. 
and it just reminds me. I was literally like, I think one of the songs on the playlist was Invisible String, and I was listening to Invisible String, which I thought that I recorded that. No, I made a note. I made a note of it. Like, I was literally, like, I just had my music on shuffle. I always just listen to music when I read. And I was listening to Invisible String. Just felt, felt right. So in the final quote that I have highlighted is, Rosie and Adam, who quote that I've highlighted is Rosie and Adam are doing it. And Rosie's maybe saying something negative about her body, you know, because she's self-conscious, she had a child. And Adam says, I mean this in the politest way possible, Rosie. Which she kind of says, like, I mean this in the politest way. Or you're politely splitting me in half earlier, is what she said. So I kind of felt like that was a play on what she said earlier. But he says, I mean this in the politest way possible, Rosie. I swear, but for the love of God, shut up. And if you don't, if you say one more thing about this body that isn't praising how effing exquisite it is, I'm going to do us both a favor and shut you up with my, in your mouth. And that's just how I would love to be talked to. If I'm being negative about myself. What's hotter than that? Nothing. Nothing is. But yeah, um, if you want to see my full review, check it out on my Instagram. I'm going to link it in the bio or in the description um, at Sierra Reads. If you think I should do more videos like this, comment, shoot me a DM. Hopefully next time it'll be more cohesive. I know this one is not cohesive, not professional, not aesthetically pleasing. It's chaos. And if you come here for the aesthetically pleasing videos, I'm sorry, this is the wrong place for you to come because I'm a hot mess express and I only make chaotic things so but yeah I hope you subscribe I hope you comment follow like message me on Instagram if you find me through YouTube vice versa